Hi everyone and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. It's a brand new year and of course we are beginning our first installment in our crochet series for 2022 which is Shall We Crochet? And so for January's installment we are going to be working on this beautiful snowflake stole. So the stole shape is your traditional rectangular shape. It's not usually very long or large, but it's perfect for adding on to any uh, maybe slightly more formal outfit. You just want a little something to uh, cover the shoulders and add just that little extra something to an outfit. And what I really loved about this working on this shawl is the yarn that we used, which was the Caron Latte Cakes, and it just makes it just a little extra cozier while still keeping a little bit of an extra elevated look and feel to the shawl. I'm so excited to get you guys going. It's very, very easy. The stitch is a split shell stitch, and we are essentially working in the round, and if you really want to think about it, it's kind of like working a granny rectangle. So uh, I'm gonna give you all the details when we jump into the tutorial itself. So let's get all of our materials together and let's dive in to our snowflake stole. Okay, so let's dive into the materials here. The yarn that I'm using is one of my favorites to work with. Might be a little tricky to see on camera, but I'm gonna try my best. This is the Yarnspirations Caron Latte Cakes. Now, the only thing that I am sad about is that I cannot seem to find this color. So this is the cream color. So what I notice is every season when they bring these latte cakes back is they seem to revamp their color ways or combinations. So I noticed that uh, recently, if you try to go on their website, actually this is available exclusively at Michael's by the way, um, that now they're, they have some like self-striping combinations and nothing really solid. So I'm hoping uh, that by the time this video comes out, maybe they've come back with some solid colors again. Or, I mean, you could choose any color you want, but because this was going to be my snowflake shawl, I really wanted it to be in this color. Now, you may remember me using this in my 2020 Year of the Bride series. And this was part of November's project, which was the bridal scarflet. Now, I didn't use the whole thing. I'm just sorry that I only bought one cake. These cakes come in a 250 gram ball and they contain 530 yards or 485 meters. And um, I probably used about half this cake. I know I am stretching this by trying to use this for uh, my shawl. In fact, that's why I call it a stole. And as you remember, the difference between a shawl and a stole is that they are slightly narrower and uh, they're usually used to elevate a, um, a more elegant outfit, we'll say. So that is the yarn I am gonna go for. There's lots of Caron cakes out there, just not in this color. So in case you're wondering, I would grab two cakes if you really wanna make a full, full shawl. Uh, but I think one cake would probably be fine for the stole. So, um, as always, make sure you have a pair of scissors and a handy darny needle on hand to sew in your ends. And for this project, I am gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter hook, also known as a K or a 10 and a half. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna begin by placing a slip knot on our hook. And in fact, I'm gonna be starting this project very similar to the way I did the scarflet, the bridal scarflet. So we're gonna start off with loops. So we're gonna create our stole by working from the center out. So it's gonna look like a little bit of a spine, but this is for me the part that looks the most like snowflakes. So you're gonna start off by chaining four. Three and four. And notice I didn't do that very tightly, okay? And then what we're gonna do is into the very first chain, we wanna place a double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook right into that very first chain and I'm gonna resolve a double crochet. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a loop, okay? So now we're gonna create another loop. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. 
you'll just turn over your work and into that loop, you're gonna double crochet just like you did before. So now you're just gonna continuously work into these loop spaces. Now, why I'm opting to do this partly is for the snowflake effect, but also because of the nature of this yarn, it might be a little tricky to see on camera. And for those of you that are a little newer, this yarn does make it sometimes a little bit challenging to find your stitches. So by working into the loops, this is gonna make your life a lot easier. So again, you will chain three, one, two, and three, and then you'll turn your work. And into the loop space, you will double crochet. And those are your loops right there. So you're gonna continue doing that until you have a 41 loops in total. And that's gonna create the spine of our project and then we're gonna to continue to work around that. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you when you've completed your 40 loops. Okay, I have completed my 41 loops. Okay, so my work looks like that. And now we are gonna begin round one. So what we've created is the spine. So what we're gonna do is we are going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we are going to, sorry, you're gonna chain four. So we need an additional chain. Then we are gonna go into the same loop. So into the loop now you're gonna place two double crochets. So we have one and we have two. Okay, so that chain four is going to count as a double crochet chain one. And when we come back around, you'll see why, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one and place two more double crochets into that same loop. So what we're creating here is a split shell, okay? So that's a shell with a split in the middle, okay? So it looks something like that. And what you're gonna do now is skip the next loop and into the following loop, you're going to do the same thing. So we are gonna place a split shell into every second loop. So that means it's two double crochets, chain one, and again, two double crochets. Now you'll notice I'm stitching very loosely. I also have a larger size hook because we do want this to sit really relaxed and loose, especially for this texture of yarn. Um, if you're gonna crochet too tightly, I feel like for this particular yarn, it's gonna lose its beauty. So really just be aware of that, okay? Then we skip the next loop and into the following loop, we do the same thing two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Okay, and you're gonna do that all the way down until you get to the very last loop there, okay? So go ahead and do that and I will meet you at the end. Okay, so I just completed my last split shell and you should have a total of 20 shells altogether. Now, if you end up having 21, it just means that you most likely didn't skip a loop. Uh, it's not the end of the world though, okay? Um, if you have 22 or you have 19, it's not the end of the world, but if you do wanna go back and correct it, just double check that you skipped a loop between each uh, shell. It really helps to skip those loops because that's what's gonna help your work just sit a little bit more um, nice and relaxed there. So that is what your first portion of round one looks like. Now at the very end, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go around this last loop and then continue to work along the bottoms of the loops to finish our first round. So at the end of your last split shell, what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain one, and now you're gonna create another split shell into that same loop. So essentially we're gonna create a short side, if you will. So you're gonna go back into that same loop, I'm just gonna try and work over my tail, and place two double crochets, chain one, 
chain one, and another two double crochets to complete my split shell. Okay, so you can see it's coming around the bend nicely. And for the most part right now, it looks pretty circular. But as we work continuous rounds, these corners will become more obvious, okay? So now we really are working along the bottom. So again, you're gonna go back into this same loop because remember, this last split shell created the side. Now we need to create the bottom. So you're gonna chain one again and then create your next split shell, which is two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Trust me, at the end of this project, you are gonna be a pro at this split shell. Okay, back into there. Just like that, okay? So if I just spread that out a little bit, you can see that shape. So split shell on the bottom, a split shell on the side and a split shell along the top. Now I put a chain one between each sh split shell to create our little corners here. In between your regular shells, you do not need a chain one, okay? So now we just go into the very next loop. So now it's gonna be much more obvious. We're gonna be working into the bottoms of all the previously worked shell loops. So again, you would skip this one and into the very next one, you go ahead and create your split shell. Okay, and if you wanna try and work uh, your end in as you go, you can, but this one I'm just gonna sew back in at the end of the project there. So chain one and two double crochets. Okay, so now you can really see that those loops are really taking shape there. Okay, pretty easy. Continue into the bottoms of the loops until you get to your very first loop. I'm gonna meet up with you here because I'm gonna address that first chain four we did, okay? So split shells into each loop and I'll see you back here in a bit. Okay, so I've just created my last split shell into my last loop that I've got there. Now remember, we need to create the side here so I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna do one more split shell, but remember that we had that chain four there, that's gonna count as our last double crochet. So you're gonna insert into the hook, sorry, you're gonna insert into the loop, your two double crochets, chain one, and then one double crochet, because you've already got one waiting there for you. You wanna count up to the third, one, two, three, chains and you're going to slip stitch to close off your first round okay so now your work looks something like this and it's kind of starting to give me that snowflake vibe and it looks something like this okay now for those of you that may want to work out different measurements this is a good time to take your gauge so that means that by creating these 41 loops, you wanna see um, how wide this is. So for me, my gauge is giving me about an inch and three quarters, okay? And in centimeters, that would be about four and a half centimeters. And then for my length, oops, that's giving me about 27 and a half inches. And I'll put the conversion to centimeters there on the screen. So if I wanted to create a larger piece, then I know um, for every round after that, it would increase by one and a half inches in uh, width and in length. So it's more important to have, because we're working in the round, it's more important to have this measurement here because this measurement is how much your work will increase with each round. So with the next round, your width would double and then you would add half of this to each side, okay? So your width would increase by an inch and three quarters as well as each 
of end of your length would add on an inch and three quarters. So I hope that makes sense to you. So for those of you that are gonna try and size your work differently, this is where you wanna take that gauge, okay? If that totally confuses you, don't worry about it. Just follow along exactly with this particular project and I think you will be quite happy with it. Okay, so now we're gonna take you on to round number two. Oh, and by the way, I really recommend at this point that maybe if you're a little bit newer, you're gonna take a safety pin and just place it in that corner there between your last split shell in the loop. This is the side shell and this is the last shell of the other side. And what this will do is it'll just help remind you where your actual corners are. And this is where our stole will start to take shape, okay? Right there. So what we're gonna do now to begin round two, okay, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna slip stitch into that space and you're gonna chain four and that's gonna count as a double crochet chain one because we are starting halfway through your split shell. And that'll make a lot more sense once we come back around here, okay? So then all you're gonna do is you're gonna place two more double crochets into that same space. So now each corner is going to have a split shell and this is partial, a, a partial split shell. So we're gonna finish this when we come back around at the end of round two. And so then what you're gonna do is we no longer have loops to work into. We're going to work into the split portion of the split shell. So you would yarn over and right into that chain space, you're gonna place a split shell. So each shell is gonna be placed within the shell of the previous round. Okay, just like this, see that? So this split shell is sitting inside that split shell. Okay, so now we are gonna move on to the next split shell and do the same thing. Okay, and I think you get the idea here. Split shell inside the next split shell. And this is basically what you're gonna do for rounds and rounds until you get the width and length you want for your stole. Now, again, take a couple of safety pins and go to the other corner there, and uh, that way you'll just remember where your corners are. I'm gonna meet up with you when you get to that first full corner just to take you around the bend there. Okay, so go ahead and continue until you get to that corner. Okay, so I've come to these first two full corners and so traditionally when we do a corner, we do two of the pattern that we're working on. But we've got a lot of stitches going on in here. So I'm gonna place one split shell in that corner space. Remember that is not the space of the shell, this is the corner. So I'm gonna place one split shell there. Okay, chain one. and double crochet, okay? Now I'm gonna take this pin out because what's happening now is we now have a split shell in the corner. Whereas previously, this was just a corner space, but now we actually have a split shell in the corner. So as we come around the bend here, this is the short side, remember? So there's a split shell there. We're just gonna insert one split shell right in the center like we've been doing with the others. Chain one. Okay. So we now have, so hopefully you can see the way it's coming around the corner there. Okay, so this split shell belongs to the long side. We now have a shell in the corner and we continue with the shell on the side and we're gonna place another shell in the corner. So now all of your corners will contain a split shell. Okay, and then of course you want to 
Whoops, take that out. Chain one and two double crochets. Sorry guys, if I'm speeding up here. At this point, I'm assuming that you're comfortable with your double crochets. Okay, so this was in the corner. So that means in the center of this shell, I'm gonna place this pin. Okay, so we're at the edges here. So you can see now this shell creates the corner and this shell creates a corner and this center shell remains the same, okay? So now we are gonna work around the bend here and continue on working along down the bottom side as we usually have been doing. So we insert one split shell into each split shell all the way to the end. It's pretty straightforward. It's the same stitch throughout the whole project. It's just a matter of understanding where you are because it can get confusing uh, with the split shells because the split shells have a chain one in between but between each set of shells we do not chain one okay so if i just take that out so in the next round when you come around for example in round three you will work in your split shell as usual then you're going to work into your split shell here and this is where you would actually have two sets of split shells because now our work is starting to widen out if we had done that in round two it would have bunched up our work too much so once we go into round three i'll go over that with you guys but for now we have one split shell creating a corner we still have our center shell there and now we continue on down the rest of round two shell into our corner shell into the shell and then we'll slip stitch to join here and I'll take you guys into round three. See, this is going by very quickly. It's a quick project. So uh, pause the video, finish off round two, and I'll meet you back here shortly. Okay, so I've come around here. I've done my corner, I've done my center. Remember we did that chain four at the beginning. So we are gonna go into that space we're gonna do one double crochet and then slip stitch to the top of that chain three. Okay, there is your final corner and round two is complete. Now, by the way, at the end of round one, you should have, if you had your 41 loops at the start, and you did uh, your split shells, you had 20 split shells on each side, that's gonna give you a total of 42 split shells. So there's 20 on each side and then one extra split shell on the end. Now at the end of round two, you should now have 46 split shells. Because remember, we're adding four split shells. We now have one in each corner. So at the end of round two, you should have 46 split shells, okay? Now let's go on to round three, and this is the way you're going to repeat every round from now on for the rest of this project. Okay, so for round three, we're gonna just slip stitch over into the corner here, and we are gonna start by chaining four as usual. One, two, three, four. And then we are going to create a full shell, split shell. So that's two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. So we're gonna be fitting a lot of stitches into this corner, but now we've got a bigger corner to, um, to kind of cover, a bigger corner space. And this will be the way all of your corners will go from now on. So this time, instead of placing the pin in the center of the split shell, we're actually going to place it in the space between because there's gonna be two split shells here, okay? But now we've come around the corner and we're just gonna continue doing what you've always done. You just find the very next split shell. And this is where it's really important to pay attention because there's a lot of spaces here. It's kind of that very lacy. 
So it's very easy to confuse spaces. So see, this is the space between the shells. So this is the chain one space. That's the middle of the shell. That's the split. That's where we want to work into. So make sure you just pay attention to that because it's so easy to just start adding all kinds of extra stitches. <laughs> and then your work will just take on a completely different shape. Okay. So that's pretty much it. You know the drill at this point for sure. So see, split shell inside a split shell. You can really see a little bit of that snowflakey effect taking place now. I just love that. Okay, so go ahead, do it all the way to the end. And then I'm going to meet back up with you in your first corner here. And that's where we're going to do the two full split shells. Um, just so that you're feel secure about doing it, and then I will set you off to create your stall. Okay, guys, so here we are coming up to that corner where we only had a split shell there, okay? So this is now you're gonna see the full effect of doing the two shells in there. So as usual, you're gonna go in through the center and create your first split shell. Okay, so you've done your two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Now you will chain one to create a spacer and go back into that same space and do it all again. So two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Okay. So there's a lot of stitches in here. So what we have to remember is find the space that separates the two shells. And this is really where this safety pin is gonna come in handy. I know it feels like there's a lot going on there, but it will spread out and sit quite nicely. So now you just work into the next split shell, which is right there. And you just place a split shell as per usual. Okay, so you've got one split shell there, and then right away we have our next corner, okay? So that was where we placed just one split shell. So now we're gonna place two. So we have one, chain one, okay. So that's one split shell, now I need to chain one create that corner and I'm going to go back into that same space to create my next split shell. So there's a lot of chains and double crochets going on here. Okay, so that is the actual corner now. Some of you may actually like to chain two like a traditional granny square. I definitely invite you to do that, especially if you are a tight crocheter. But if you're fairly relaxed, you only need the one. Okay, so there we go. Let me just take that out. So see, now it seemed like a lot of stitches were going there, but see how it's sitting a lot nicer? Love that effect. Okay, and now you know what to do. So split shell, split shell, split shell, all the way around into that corner. And then I'll meet back up with you just to finish off round three so you feel really good about continuing on for future rounds. Okay guys, I am coming up to finishing round three. So I just did my last split shell in my split shell below. And as you notice, I made a boo-boo there. I actually forgot to put one more double crochet, but you see, you just keep on going forward. So that's what makes it unique. And uh, you know, I like to call it artistic, but it was just a boo-boo. Okay, so now remember at the beginning we did that chain four and we did a full split shell. Well, this time we are going to do, this is part of the split shell. So we're gonna go into that corner and we are gonna place two, double crochets, chain one, and only one double crochet because this counts as one. And I like to do my corners this way because it leaves less of a obvious seam. And I do this in my granny squares as well, by the way. 
And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the top of the chain three, not the fourth chain, but the third, and I'm going to slip stitch to join. Okay. So see that th chain three looks like it's a double crochet. And now I've got a split shell corner split shell. Okay. And then I would go back and place my pin here. So there is the shell and there is the corner space. Okay. So now we've completed round three. So you can really see, look at how beautiful that is. Just love it. So at the end of round three, you should have a total of 50 split shells because remember we're adding four every time uh, with every round. Okay. So now to begin round four, you're gonna begin this way with every single round after this, just like we did in round three. That's why I like the ending off in a corner here. You will slip stitch into where your corner is. You will chain four, just like we did at the beginning of chain, uh, chain, just like we did at the beginning of round three. So this is literally gonna be a repeat of round three. Into your corner, you will place a full split shell. Okay, actually, let me just take this out so it doesn't get caught up in there. So that means, well, you know what that means. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Okay, and then I'm gonna replace, remember, Always want to remember where your corners are. So that is one of the split shells and then it's going to get one at the end. Okay. So I'm not going to go into round four because it's exactly the same as round three. And there you can see when you hold it up, you can see where the spine of your stole is. And I just love, love, love that. Okay. So this is where you press pause. You put on a good Netflix movie or a podcast and you just stitch your little heart out creating all these split shells. Remember how to create your corners and you're gonna do this for as many rounds as you like until you get the, uh, the width and the length that you desire. So once you've done that, I'm gonna meet back up with you here and show you the end result of mine. Okay guys, so I have completed my stole and I have something, hopefully you can see all of that that looks like this. And it just came out beautiful. I love how that stitch just looks divine. I just, to me, it looks just like from far away, like little snowflakes, especially in the center. There's our spine there. Just love how that came out. And what's really cool about the design, since we did it in the round, you can just faintly see where the corners came into play. And I think it just adds beautifully to the texture as well as to the drape. So as you can see, when it's draped around the shoulders and it's just left to sit there, it really looks like a little capelet. And that is essentially the idea of the stole is just to sit, cover the shoulders and slightly the back and just elevates um, a nice formal outfit. So I'm very happy with that, how that came out. Now you can leave yours as is and it's complete. However, I did have a small amount of yarn left, which I knew was not gonna be enough for a whole full round at the end. But I am just gonna put a very dainty little uh, edging on the project. So if you are interested in adding just this little edging, then follow along. Otherwise, you are done. Your stole is complete and you are ready to take it out on a night of dancing in the snow. I don't know what you would be doing in January outside, but anywho, let's move on and do our edging here. Okay, so basically I'm at my corner where I finished my last round. I am not snipping off my yarn. Oh, and by the way, uh, the measurement in length that I have, I know I said this in the intro, but just to kind of remind you guys. So in width, I ended up having 16 and a half inches by 39 and a half inches in length. So that equates to 42 centimeters in width and 100 centimeters in length. And this is great for an average size. And for the rounds, how many rounds I did, in case you're curious, 
I completed a total of 14 rounds or 14 rows if you call it rows, okay? So just a little something you can gauge yourself by if you're interested. Okay, so let's begin our edging. So we finished at the corner, we did not snip off our yarn. And what I wanna do here is just add a little bit of a peaked effect in these chain one spaces. Now I'm not necessarily looking to add extra stitches, so that's why I'm gonna do it in the fashion I'm gonna show you, okay? So I have, whoops, did I do that already? Yeah, so I have slip stitch to join, and now I'm gonna go into that space, and actually what I'm gonna do is I am going to single crochet. I'm not gonna slip stitch again, I'm gonna place a single crochet. Then I'm gonna chain two, and place another single crochet into the chain space. Okay, so it just gives you a little bit, gives that peak a little bit more definition. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the next full stitch. Now, in general, I always tell you guys, don't miss out on that stitch. But because we've already placed a single crochet into the space, I'm gonna count that as taken. So I'm gonna go into the next one and just place a single crochet. So like I said, I'm not looking to add stitches and that's why I actually skipped that very first double crochet, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is now I'm in the space between the shells. So I am actually going to single crochet but not into the stitch. I'm gonna go into the space and single crochet. And what this does is it just kind of makes that space just a smidge more defined between the shells. Okay, and now I'm going into a shell. So remember, I always skip the one next to it and I go into the next stitch, single crochet, and now I'm at my chain one space. So in every chain one space, you're going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet again. Okay, there you go. So you can see now that gives it a peak. And then I just go to the next visible stitch. So remember this one is hidden here, but that's okay because we placed an extra single crochet. So I'm gonna go into basically the last double crochet of your shell and I'm going to single crochet and then in the space between the shells, I'm gonna single crochet. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. It's, it is very subtle, but you can see it just creates a beautiful little shaping there. So I'll do that one more time. I'm gonna go into the stitch that's closest to the center. I'm gonna place a single crochet. Then for every chain one space, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Now, some of you may go, well, that really bothers me to skip this stitch. You can certainly go into it. There's nothing wrong there to do that. A single crochet into each one. But what you're gonna notice is that your work will ripple. Now, that actually is a really pretty effect. So if that's what you wanna do, um, I say go for it because it's gonna look really, really beautiful. I just opted to keep mine a little bit flatter and that's why I didn't wanna add extra stitches. And because we're placing two stitches into one space here, if we were to go into the stitch right next to it, it would add extra stitches, which would cause that ripple, which again is just simply a different technique, but that is not what I'm looking to do for mine, okay? You see, it just gives it a little bit of a little something. All right, that's it. That's all you need to do. And if you are opting not to do the border, then you can fast forward to the final reveal uh, and you are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my border and I will meet back with you in a little bit. And there you have it guys, the snowflake stole. And as you've seen in previous clips, it just drapes so beautifully around the shoulders. It wasn't that tricky to make. And like I said, if you like the granny square motifs, this is essentially just a granny rectangle. And I hope you enjoyed the laciness of the stitch. Again, we use the split shell stitch. And uh, I just, I'm very excited at how this came out. I'm really looking forward to using this as part of some of my winter formal wear. 
and uh, and there you have it. So if you have any questions, please, as always, leave me a question in the comment box down below, or you can always email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And come visit me on the website at crochetcrafty.com and make sure to subscribe to my monthly newsletter. It's absolutely free. And you also get gifted a free written pattern every month, just as a thank you for coming along and hanging out with me on my crochet journey. And as always, you can find me on the socials on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And make sure you tag me on Instagram because I always love to see the colors you guys choose for your particular projects. And uh, I love to share the photos and final reveals of all of my friends who crochet some of my designs. And as always, if you are new here and you haven't pressed that subscribe button, I invite you to do so. If you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you'd like to see more, make sure to press that subscribe button so you never miss when I upload, which is every Wednesday morning. Now, in the meantime, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Take good care of yourselves. Happy crocheting. And I will see you guys in the next session. Bye-bye.